Police have confirmed that the victim of a stabbing in South End was a chef from Essex. Reynald Duchesne was stabbed after getting into an argument with two strangers. It happened as he left a classical music concert in South End's Priory Park. The spectacular finale of a Royal Philharmonic concert in Priory Park, but it's been overshadowed by what happened shortly after this footage was taken. A concert goer was murdered. The victim had left Priory Park to pick up his car, but outside this bridal boutique just a few yards from the park gates, he got involved in an argument with two young men. During that argument, he was stabbed once in the left-hand side of his chest. After he was stabbed, he staggered back across this road and back towards the park gates, where he collapsed in front of his family. The ambulance crew couldn't save Reynard Duchesne. He was dead by the time he got to South End General. He worked as a chef in London and lived with his partner and her children in South Woodham Ferrers. Yards away from his car. He was yard, literally yards away from his car to take him back. He's had this altercation from which he's received one stab wound, which has proved fatal. As roadies dismantled the stage, police said they were looking for two men, both in their 20s, one of them 5 feet 10 inches tall, with dark spiky hair, a slim build and dressed all in white. Horrible. Absolutely horrible that it could happen around here. You don't expect it to. South End, you get robberies and stuff like that, but that's quite shocking. Thank God it doesn't happen that often. Police searched drains, even post boxes, to try to find the murder weapon, determined to catch the killer of the region's latest victim of knife crime. Gareth George, BBC Look East. There are major tailbacks on the A12 in both directions following a crash involving a tractor, trailer and a lorry. The fire service says the trailer came loose from the tractor and slid down an embankment on the A12 at Hatfield Peveril. The lorry driver is being treated for life-threatening injuries. The air ambulance has taken another man to hospital in London. The police in Suffolk are linking two incidents involving guns in Ipswich. A man was shot in the ankle at Major's Corner yesterday morning. Ten minutes later, a couple in Norwich Road were threatened by a man with a handgun. Two abattoirs in this region are under investigation after slaughtermen were filmed apparently mistreating animals. It follows secret filming by the charity Animal Aid. The Food Standards Agency described it as one of the worst cases of animal cruelty it's seen. You may find some of these pictures disturbing from the start of the report. Secretly filmed in April, the footage appears to show an abattoir worker screaming, kicking and abusing pigs with electric tongs moments before being slaughtered. The man, who has since had his licence revoked by the Food Standards Agency, worked at Barber's Abattoir in Purley, near Chelmsford. The undercover filming was conducted by the campaign group Animal Aid, who ultimately would like to see all abattoirs closed. They also recorded abuse taking place at the J.H. Lambert Abattoir at Bungie in Suffolk, where three slaughtermen have since had their licences suspended. No one from either company was available for interview. In a statement, the FSA said the vast majority of slaughterhouses are fully compliant with their animal welfare legal requirements. The solution would seem to lie in more observation, whether by management in person, CCTV or additional vets or inspectors. But critics say such changes must be legally enforced and not just left to industry self-regulation. The Essex abattoir was, was the worst. The shocking, gratuitous violence there is, is, is really incredible to see. Where was the vet when this was going on? Where was the slaughterhouse operator? Why did his colleagues not step in and say something? That makes me think there's a culture within that slaughterhouse and probably within many slaughterhouses right across the board. Both abattoirs and the workers involved are currently under investigation and could now face prosecution. Clive Lewis, BBC Look East. Firefighters in Norfolk say they've been prevented from speaking out against plans to shake up the service. A series of public consultation meetings started today. The fire service says the changes will improve flexibility and efficiency. The union believes it will slow down response times. The world's only remaining steam coaster has been lifted onto a giant pontoon in Lowestoft. The SS Robin has been undergoing restoration in the port. Eventually, she'll be towed to London with the pontoon to become the world's first floating museum. The Canadian gymnastics team will be based in Lowestoft in the run-up to the Olympic Games in London. It's a major coup for the Waveney Club, which is celebrating tonight after getting one of the best teams in the world to train with them. 
Waveney Gymnastics Centre in Lowestoft is one of the best in the country. That's why the Canadians have decided to set up camp. And what a great opportunity for these youngsters to be able to train alongside an elite Olympic team. A real once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so as a club, you know, we're determined to kind of seize it with both hands and do as much as we can do to encourage these people to come here, um, not just for the club, but for the town and the community, because it means so much. And as you say, there will never probably be another chance like this for us to, you know, to kind of maximise this opportunity, so we're going to go for it and do as much as we can. Kyle Schufeld from Canada, Olympic champion on floor. It's a big catch for Suffolk. The Canadians are in the world's top 10, and there could be around 50 in the party. They're the third country to pick Suffolk as a training base, with Rwanda already going to Bury St Edmunds and Azerbaijan using Ipswich. Mustn't be faint hearted on the dismount. Punches the beam. Beautifully done. I spoke to the Canadians when they were here last time. They were very impressed with the support that Waveney Gymnastics Centre gave to them and Waveney District Council gave to them. They really like the area. They like the fact that it's, it's away from London, away from the hustle and bustle, but yet within really easy reach of the game. So they're really impressed, and I think this endorses the fact that they enjoyed it and they want to come back. This could be just for starters. The Canadians like to train with other nations, and they've asked the Chinese to join them in Lowestoft. If that happens, Waveney Gymnastics Centre will have struck gold. Sean Peel, BBC Look East, Suffolk. You're watching Look East from the BBC. Coming up, World Cup pain put to good use. Well, apart from the football, it was a busy weekend for our athletes. Goldie Sayers from Cambridge wrote her name in the record books by becoming the first...